Guten Tag. Quality control, what are you eating? Isn't that nice, that bone? Oh my God, it's a chicken's foot. OMG, what is wrong with him? Yeah, he loves chicken feet. And he can only eat them frozen though, believe it or not. So there we go. Right, what am I doing today? I am doing the CD175. What am I doing to the CD175? Well, I've been riding her around, obviously not recently or not last year, but the year before. Went to Simon Miller's uh, Bike Museum, if you might have, might have seen that in other videos. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, yeah, I noticed a fork uh, oil seal weep. So, there it is. It's sort of, yeah, there was oil down there and all the rest of it, and that's all scratchy and horrible and nasty. So I thought, right, take a fork out and get some seals, which I have done. Thus, this is a new seal. Uh, and where's the old saw? I can just show you what the issue with this. I think I've seen one of you guys on the CD175 group say that you've bought OEM replacements or or similar. Where the heck has that gone? Mind you, looking at my work surface, look at that. <laughs> I can't find... These are the two L's I've had to find and scratch together to actually change an oil seal. Where the heck is it? Ah, there it is. Just where I left it. Right, there you have. That is the original oil seal, which is knackered, basically. Okay, so we'll put that there. Here is a nice new oil seal. Can you see the difference? Those hawk-eyed guys of you will go, ah, yeah, yeah, this... This bit here is deeper than that bit there, you see? And of course, when this piece goes down into its housing, there is a groove around the housing for a circlip. And when you put this one in, this covers the groove for the circlip, thus renders it useless because it just pops back out. It's the same diameter, it's exactly, exactly right, it's not a problem, so, in my infinite wisdom, and being stuck in a corner a little bit, if you like, how do you get out of that situation? Do you order original Honda ones? Yes, basically. If you don't want to fanny around. Is there an answer? Is there a way out of this situation without going original parts? Which are probably cheaper anyway. Uh, time being uh, a, a major part of this, i.e. the bike is going. Shock horror! I've managed. Well, I say I've managed. Unfortunately, I've managed to sell the bike to a lovely gentleman. Um, but hence me noticing the oil weep once I, when I gave it a once over. And there you go. So yes, it's going. I was going to keep it. I love riding it. It's a wonderful machine. It's only done one thousand three hundred and fifty-three. I thought I took it over, over two thousand miles, but no, one thousand. 353 miles that's all it's done but yes on the pastures new i've got a new project coming there literally is no room in the shed the rs is out there because i need to have space to work yes yeah, legless already look there's the other leg which is which is oil sealed up it, it, there is just no room in here to have two bikes plus work um i've got the lathe as well coming coming along. Thanks Conrad and Mike for welding on the new T-bar. Wonderful. I've yet to try it. I really, in, in hindsight, I, you know, this piece here is just probably an inch or two too short so you can adjust the height against your working wood. Anyway, I'm digressing, aren't I? Right, so oil seal. How do you get over that difference in gap? Because you have to get over it, or you have to buy the right parts. Simple enough. I put my little spinnerator on here. This is a very, very fine stone, and it's adjustable. You might have seen it in other videos. And I literally, if you look at this back here, this top piece here is literally, if I can show you, see that? It's literally two or three mil of extra rubber for no apparent reason. So I basically, Whittled it down, 
and the new seal. Let me put my light on. And the new seal pops in there beautifully. Right, so that is a way out, guys. If you're stuck with these bigger seals, sandpaper, a grinding wheel, whatever, a very fine grinding wheel or sandpaper, nothing coarse, and just rub it up and down about for about, I don't know, two or three minutes. Or You don't need to expose metal. You just take it down until it's the same size as the top of there. Okay, that side piece, not the lip, that side piece. And it's fine, pops in, and there you go. So, yeah, this is absolutely beautiful. Was this easy? No, it's the first time I've done these shocks, these forks, on uh, on, a C, on a CD175. I've done many others uh, over my lifetime, but first time for one of these. Okay, let's just pop that there. Simple enough, apart from... This little sausage here is very thin steel. It's just a sleeve, basically, just to cover up that gap there. So you don't see any of this in the bike. That piece is up in the up in the cowling up here. Hence why it's a bit rusty because it's exposed to nastiness. Okay, and it's it is 49 years old, isn't it? But to get this off, you have to tap that up. Well, everything seems to be made of treacle here. It just you get your drift, oh, a nice little drift here. Use that very gingerly, you know, soft mallet, wherever it is, where's me and Timmy? Soft mallet there. Just toyed with it, nothing, absolutely nothing. So I ended up getting my knickers in a twist and get, got some heat on it, got the old air gun going on it. Just gently right round for about five minutes. Started tapping again and up she went. Now the crap in here, because this is steel and this is alloy, the sleeve in there is about, oh crikey, about an inch and three quarters of this alloy. So you can imagine the, you know that kind of corrosion, you get that salty, flaky corrosion you get with aluminium and steel when they weld together. That's in there. And by George, that was a tough cookie to get off. But I've managed to do that without wrecking the whole, the whole place. Okay, so that's the doggyish pig of all. Uh, another point to make, um, the screw that goes in the bottom there is thus, and you can see that it didn't like me taking it out, quite obviously. I mean, I had it wound back in there with a nice cop new copper washer on the bottom, and I suddenly thought to myself, what about the next poor guy that has to do, do this? Chances are, I know this ends satin oil up in there, that's fine, but that was a dog to get out. I had to talk it out nicely so i thought to myself why don't i change that for a allen head bolt which i have done this that makes life so much easier for the next person so there we are that's exactly the same size and just a proof of the pudding there he is down in there okay so that's all future proof and ready to go back on the bike which i will do in a second i've had me brew but me cup mysteriously disappeared it must have been me uh me right honorable better half okay so that is literally ready to go back in now when you do this kind of kind of a job i don't suggest you take both out i, t I suggest you do one at a time yeah you undo let's uncover this you undo your top your top plug there it's got a little oil seal on it you undo that obviously take that out but don't forget if you take the leg out and you turn it upside down all the oil's going to piss out everywhere you undo your clamp bolt and just gingerly da -da 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 -da. it was a little bit tough so i put the axle through effectively there and i just sort of bang 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 each side and it and it slid out okay so that's that so Fitting, refitting is obviously opposite of uh, removal. Right, I've babbled on enough about that so far, so I'm literally going to slide that one back in and anchor that up so none of this geometry goes out of shape. So then that's anchored in there. Then you can go ahead, undo that, which I've already, that's that bolt there, undo the clamp bolt, and then you can take the other one out, and I'll show you the hurdles to get over for that. In the whole picture a big picture of things these are a doddle to do 
If I'd done these before, I would have done it in 10 minutes, apart from that bloody collar. Uh, right, enough babbling, more spannering. Right, before I carry on spannerisation in, um, I was chatting to some of the guys on the CD175 group again on uh, on Facebook. Uh, sadly, for those of you that don't have Facebook, you're missing out. It's not a bad group at all. Uh, what I... I had some... Uh, I've just rebuilt my computer room, okay? that's I know it sounds like I'm digressing again, but it, stick with it. I had two black glass... Uh, TV tables, if you like, um, and they consisted of each pe each one consisted of two pieces of glass, uh, separated by <coughs> chrome legs. And I thought to myself, mm, that looks suspiciously the same diameter as these little monkeys. And in all fairness, it's really not. far away there's literally a millimeter in it you can see where I'm going with this can't you I was going to obliterate that to get it off because it really was a sausage but when I found out that this is a millimeter perhaps 1.5 mil too big a diameter I had to really take my time with these but that would have looked lovely just chop that off there slide that over there that would have looked fantastic jobs are good but anyway so there you go guys those of you waiting bated breath on my answer to my supply of these, here they are. A lot of them even got ones that are bananas, that's almost made to measure that. But alas, these were off of an old coffee table, two off a coffee table, they were free to me, so I was going to utilise them on there. What a shame. Anyway, right, let's get this fork back in its hole. Okay, sexy leg is back in. What do you think, quality? Is that all right? Yeah? You happy with that? Right, fair enough. What I should have done in hindsight was drain the fluid out in situ first. So let's do that. Let's aim my pot somewhere about there. You watch it piss out all over the place. Uh, uh, uh. Oh my God. That's because that seal's gone. This is the one that's gone, look. So that's going to be replaced. And can you remember, children, how much goes back in the fork? That's right, 150 mils. Yeah, that's... Things happen for a reason. That was meant to be done, wasn't it? It flows a lot better when there's no crap in there and the top plugs out, which it is. So, uh, yeah, that's uh, a milky substance. So that's water in there. That's no good. So, out it comes. Right, part two in a second. Undo the clamp and drop the fork. Right, now the fork is out the bike and it is now getting prepped, ready to take this off. I've been applying heat around this area. I've also squirted, penetrated and uh, cutting thread uh, fluid into there to try and unseat this you see the two little stab marks that's a, a, a machine press to sort of grip the aluminium part of the stanchion there right so you might have noticed earlier these scratchy scratchy marks okay now do you know what's caused that i've just worked it out you've got these three one two three little tiny plastic rivets in there which are designed to centralise this part in this part so nothing scratches the fork. And as I come round to this side, where the scratches are, look what's missing. Yeah, so I'm going to need to address that. Okay, so I've just heated that up. I'm now going to gingerly start tapping on this little recessed uh, lip there and see if we get any kind of movement. Um, right, fingers crossed. My philosophy is where this has been leaking, obviously this should be saturated in here with, with fork oil. So it should be less of a, uh, shall we say, monkey uh, to get off. Right, a little bit more heat, I think, and then Mr. Soft Mallet time. Right, let me crack on. Oh, where's me brew? Right, collar is off of there 
You can see what I was talking about there with that horrible, crusty... Uh, it's almost like a, a salty, powdery... It's just a chemical reaction, isn't it, between the alloy and the, and the steel. But there we are. I tell you what. If I ever have to change fork oil seals in a CD175 in the future without new uh, chrome collars to go on there, it will be too soon, okay? <laughs> did I enjoy that? You know, yeah, of course I did. I mean, I didn't at the time because, you know, you're banging and a clattering and you've, you're making edges on this piece here. Look at it, it's not brilliant. But the other one was exactly the same. And now look at it. Well, I've managed to completely tidy it up via various tools and things so you know it's not a baddie and there's some more paint's gone back on it so it's all been sealed again so that's fine um but boy that is not one of my favorite jobs fork seals generally i mean you guys know don't you you start you got you've got the oil seals in your hand you've got the new fluid to go back in you've got all your spanners laid out and it never goes to plan does it it never goes easy but there we are i can't wait to see inside this uh this fork leg to see what sort of gunk and and nastiness is in there it's all going to get flushed through um and then i give all the paintwork a, a rub down of isopropyl alcohol which is absolutely brilliant stuff oh i've got one in the fridge for later oh, flip a neck right okay so let's uh press the pause button tidy this up undo the nasty uh japanese industry standard screw and get this leg apart Oh, groovy baby. Right, well, after a good while of meticulously cleaning, I mean, look at the gunk that came out of there. Look, it's nasty, isn't it? And the inside there, that is nice and clean now. Uh, you see the two little plastic rivets there and the one missing. Got an idea for that, so I'll share that in a second. But yeah, I mean, that end, I have literally used what I used to start with to get all the real rough edges off is my uh, adjustable spannerizers. Just literally nibbled very gently any sharp edges back into shape. I didn't apply any heat to this, I didn't need to. This is thin enough to work on as is. And then I went round it literally looking down the side here to get an eye line and just literally tapping anywhere that it's sort of you know, funneled out if you like okay and this thing is brilliant um, I'm just gonna finish this off Just cleaning this up, ready for uh, some new paint. Looks good. There you are. And another thing I did with this, because you've got a very fine stone blade here, he says, putting his finger on it whilst it's rotating. That's not very clever, is it? And this side, you see, it's like it's a cross between. The most finest Brillo pad you could ever find, and felt. That's the only way I can describe that. And look what that's done to there. Look, that all that corrosion has now gone. So I'll give that a light, a light, a very light oiling before I put that back, or a bit of a bit of grease on there, or something, a bit of lithium, just to stop that corrosion reappearing. On that. Anyway, next part of the equation is to get this nasty 
skanky oil seal out of there. I'm trying to film this in such a way that you guys can see it and I can see it too. Would help, wouldn't it? Look, I mean, look at the amount of shite on there, look. Absolutely disgusting, isn't it? Right, in here we have a internal circlip somewhere. I'm just trying to unbury it for you so you can see it. Oh, oh quality's having a go. I don't know if you can see the two ends there. Let's have a look. Where are we? You've got one hole there and one hole up there. Okay. Oh, he's not happy about something's upset him. There you go. So I need to get my super duper long nosed bent uh, clip extractors in there and do the right thing. So I'll just do it now whilst, whilst we're filming. Let's have a go. There's that one. There's that one and that one. Let's try and do this live on TV. Yeah, that went well. And the trick is, there we go. Look at that. Right tool for the job, sir. Suit you, sir. There we go. A non-damaged circlip. Good clean up. That'll go straight back in. Beautiful. So easy, guys, to break them things, isn't it? Anyway, right, I need to get now this horrible, nasty screw out the end of there, and then I'll show you how to get that seal out of there easily. Calm down, E.T. Calm down. That flipping screw, yes, the inevitable has happened. Look at that. That's after heating, tapping down first with a proper fit screwdriver, a screwdriver tapping it with, with a little mallet there and, and the hammer just to give it a bit of metallicness uh, tried to unscrew it whoosh, made a flipping toffee even the dog's not happy Mark at him bless him right so all is not lost basically I've just got to get me big fat drill in there drill that head off so, so I can get the, uh, the tube out and then we'll see what happens when I get the tube out just have to put the little alloy piece in the vice very gingerly and undo that snapped part of the bolt and refit a new one after I've cleaned it all out, lubed it, put the new seal in, oiled it and put it back together. Am I enjoying it now? Mm, borderline. No, of course I'm enjoying it. <laughs> These things happen. You, you, If a job goes too well, uh, something else will go wrong later on. So I'd rather all the nasty crappy bits come out now. I can iron them out. Get rid of it for you know in for future, so it doesn't happen again. Get these hex bolts in there. Jobs are good. Anyway, Mr. Honda San, we need to have a word about these flipping toffee screws. Where'd you get them from? China. <laughs> <laughs> oh, to be continued. Okay, right now I've got that nasty pesky screw head out of there. And there's now nothing really stopping this part coming away from this part. This, because of the spring compression in there, all I've got to do is literally bounce it. Yeah, almost there. There we go. Simple as that. Okay, I'm just gonna. Oh, well, it's gonna go all over the place anyway, isn't it? Got most of it out. There's the spring. What's the bottom bushing like? Quite lovely, sir. Quite lovely. There we go. And there is that nasty flipping seal, which can now come off. I can tidy that up. This is the part I'm interested in. I want to give that a good clean. Come on, there you come. There is the bolt. The snapped off, sheared off bolt in there. That needs to be removed from this uh, valve tube. Okay. Right. Oh, simple as that, eh? Plenty of rags when you're doing this, obviously, because it is a mucky job. 
Right, I'm definitely having a brew now. <laughs> Excellent. Right, so I have the tube clamped in the vise very gently. There's nothing on that, look, literally. Because we have a flat edge here, it's you don't need to give it a load of beans. Anyway, you'll have to split that alloy straight away. Right, my favourite tools ever. Let's, uh, I don't think this is going to be too much of a, of a problem anyway. Right, yeah, there we go. That was easy enough, wasn't it? Okay, that's cool. Well, that can come out. <laughs> like so. One hand removal. I'm just going to carry on with that. Oh, it's coming. It is coming. Right, you don't want to watch me stand there screwing. Oh, it's coming. Here it is. You nasty little critter. I mean, there was really nothing holding that in there. So, okay, a little bit of corrosion there. A little bit of uh, like battery acid corrosion type stuff. And it's not battery acid, but it's that kind of that stuff you get around the terminals of your battery. Okay, that's lovely. I should just run me tap through there again with a bit, a bit, a bit of cutting compound uh, just to clean that thread out. And then I've got to reinstall this thing. Now, there should be in the bottom of there a little copper wash. I want to fish that out first, and I'm going to flush that tube through with parts cleaner and uh, reassemble. Right, let me just show you what I do with these seals to get them the same height as that. That's the original. Okay, let's get everything out of the way. Don't, we don't oily rags any, anywhere near spinning wheels, do we? Right, let's put this... Uh, um, uh, on the floor. <laughs> right, let's give this a whirl. It's easy enough to do. You're literally taking off that 2 mil rubber lip. It's doing absolutely flipping nothing apart from stopping you getting the... See that? That's what you want to do. Simple as that. And I'll turn it off there. So I want to use two hands to really tidy that up. See, there's no metal showing. It's brilliant. So guys, if you bought these big fat ones uh, and you're pulling the hair out and you're oh no, I need to get up. Oh, look at Honda and blah, blah, blah. No, just do that. A bit of sandpaper. And these are good to go. Okay, right. Part... 30 in a minute. Right, after being on the wheel, we can put it next to the original and we can see quite clearly that that is absolutely perfect. Lovely. So that is ready to go back into situ. That is ready to go in the bin. Okay, it's all good, isn't it? Simple little tip. It's just one of them things where if I had two sets of... Uh, you know, fork seals, and one was like that, and one was the same height as the originals. I would have used the same height as the originals, obviously. I wouldn't have thought about modifying that or trying to modify it. So, <clears throat> when you when you're stuck in a corner, guys, basically what I'm saying is, if if you're really up against it, ask somebody, or you know, just think outside the box. Sometimes there's always, always more than one way to skin a rabbit, isn't there? So. Yeah, I think I've gotten out of gel there, and I haven't had to fork out for anything else, which is good. Forks are going to be fantastic after I've sorted them out. And I hope my friend there is going to re I know he's going to really love and cherish his bike. And it couldn't be going to a better person than more, honestly. Okay, right, enough babbling. I might go and get myself a Sony, actually, getting a bit peckerish. Okay, right, cheers. Let's uh, get it all sorted out and back together. Right, smiley face is back on once again. Um, all the parts are cleaned. On closer inspection of the tube, I found a little nick. So I have done the right thing. And I have used uh, chemical metal. Before I did that, I cleaned it up with uh, iso... Yeah, that stuff. Cleaned it all up. And that um, chemical metal is stuck like, what do you call it, to a blanket. So there we are. 
I wet and dried it off very, very gently with a 1200 paper, well 800 first in 12, so that is, oh look at that, suits you sir, that is beautiful. So that's probably why it was letting by. Anyway, inside of this, this has all been uh, break cleaned. look at that beauty, that's what it should look like. I should have took a picture of what it was before. Anyway, on closer inspection, with this flipping collar effort, you see these two indentations and these two snail trails? Well, obviously, that is these two indentations, like so. So what would have made my life easier, in hindsight, would be, whilst that was still in situ, probably would be to warm that up slightly and just mallet that flat a little bit, just to... Get rid of those two, uh, where are they? There, you see them? So they're quite pronounced, aren't they? Now, that's obviously what's caused all that drag. But that would have made my life a whole lot easier. Anyway, as the old saying goes, you we live and learn, don't we? So that's that. I just need to literally give it all at once over with a brake cleaner and then put it back together, get the fluids back into it. New fluid, I might add. I use Nissan AT-Matic Automatic Fluid. In my suspension units. <laughs> we don't like advertising. Oh, no, no, no. Well, there we go. Got, got over a half, got 200 mils of that. I only need 150, as you know. Whack it all back together, get it on the bike, and then I can think about um, giving it a clean, actually, because it's where well, it's been sat in the shed for literally a year. It's got a bit sort of, you know, yeah, like a bit of mouldy kind of growth on it, you know, sort of thing. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right, it's a good bucket of soapy water, doesn't it? Right, I'm going to get back together, like I say, and I'll uh, show, you, show you the end product when I finish. I need to put a little bit of paint on this collar once it's back in situ, and I mask off the shaft there so nothing goes on the on the slidey parts. Okay, right. Oh, it's all good stuff, isn't it? Oops, oops, oops. I almost forgot, didn't I? I have a box here with various bits and pieces in there like sticky back pads and all that kind of malarkey just you never know you know you, you, they come in handy don't they so well i found these two little monkeys although i only need one you know where that's going don't you that's going on here so i have three points of bushing so nothing starts to scratch down there where it shouldn't be scratching so that's all cleaned off I will trim that a little bit and put it on there so that's how I got over or I'm gonna get over that rivet being broken right let's carry on right guys and girls I am pretty much ready now for reconstruction of the fork I've got my little pad on there I've nipped it off to, to flush for the top there I've disposed of the old um, uh, fluid in a responsible way it tastes very nice you got that nice cherry red that's what it's supposed to be like automatic transmission fluid lovely lovely right first step is to pop the spring in the oil like so I've already got the seal on there so that's down there nicely and then we'll put the tube in there like so and we'll slide that in there oh there how did that get water on it I've just cleaned you off the brake fluid okay that's a bit weird anyway here he comes all right quality how you doing mate yeah that's what I thought so that all slides in there like so that little caplet goes in there. This little sausage. Oh, for goodness sake. Hey! Winnie! Shush! Right, what I do then is I use the old seal to tap that in there. Just go around it uh, in a uniform manner. Is that enough? <coughs> Not quite. Winnie, will you please give it up? 
give it up, give it up, give it up. Right, I think that's it. Now keeping pressure on, obviously, you don't want to blow the old seal back out, do you? Ooh, uh, that sounds a bit rude. <laughs> blow the old seal. Oh my goodness. Circle it over the top. Get one edge in. Get your grips whilst maintaining the pressure. There we go. Let's pop that seal back over the top. Run it down. And I've just heard that click into place beautifully. Now you can take the pressure off because it's already in situ. Okay. Just give that a bit of a, a bit of a wipe down there. Lovely jubbly. Now we're ready for the collar. And I'm going to put it back on in the same orientation, i.e. line them two pluggy lugs up. And tap that back on to a fashion. Come on, there you go. That's it. Don't use a metal hammer. Just use something soft to... Oh, it's there already. We're already bedded up. Okay, so that is now ready for some goo. Let's put some goo back in it. What the hell is that sticking in the end of there? Hundred and fifty mils, don't forget. Oh, hang on a minute. I've done a boo-boo, haven't I? What have I not done? I've not put the screw in the end. That's not big or clever, is it really? Otherwise I'd have had a knee full of red fluid. Okay, let's just wind that in. It's so much easier with Alan Alan keys, isn't it? Than fart arsing around with blooming old screw heads. Rawr. Bit lucky there, wouldn't I? Alright, let's try again. Sticky back plastic, I see. Down in there, very gently. I have got a miniature funnel which goes right down in this tiny little hole in the top here. This 8mm thread hole. But can I find it? Can I sausage? I've gone a snidge over 150mm for this. I don't know why. I just more is better, isn't it? Oh, I don't know. But there we are, that's all in there. So that's good. Pop that back in there and drip all over the floor. Tidy the end up. That is literally, I'm going to mask that up, spray this little piece, and then she can go back in the bike um, as is. Let's just give that a bit of a. Oh, that sounds and feels a whole lot better than what it did when I took it off. Here's the end bolt. Yeah, just pop the end bolt in before you start inverting it or whatever, because it will come pouring out the top there, won't it? Right, I'll pause it there and crack it on. Right, there we go, guys. All back together, lovely. Unfortunately, just went to start her, and <clears throat> she's on life support. Uh-oh. <laughs> I need to be expected, isn't it? Oh, crack us over a year ago. I should have disconnected the battery, kept on trickle charger, blah, 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 blah. Sorry. Anyway, that'll be sorted out soon, and then I can get it all tickety boo and nice and polished. Right, that'll do for now, guys. Uh, thank you for watching again. Um, take it easy to see you again. Take care of yourselves. Social distancing. Hopefully, that all comes to sort of an endish sort of thing in the near future, so we can all get out on our bikes and start enjoying life again. Right, guys, thanks for looking. Take care.